So here is a demo of the multiplayer working in the Tetra City game. So here on the right, I'm going to have my host thread. Uh, Reby network host.rb. So I got a little command line interface there where I can uh, just press S and start the host. So I'm going to start the host thread. And there it goes. It's uh, ready to accept uh, connection, socket connection. So I got two windows over here. And I want to go to the game. So I do uh, start Tetra City. So I'm going to have that in one window, and then I'm going to start another one up in this other terminal. So now I have two Tetra City games running, so I'm going to go to Multiplayer, go to Client, and Client Connect, see, so now it says I'm connected. So I'm going to press R to show that I'm ready, and I can press in to select an avatar, which is just basically an integer. So now I want to go to the other Tetra City window and go to multiplayer there. Press client and connect. And let's say select the avatar, I'll say four, and say we're ready. So if we go back over to the host thread window to right here, you can see the host has been receiving these messages. Uh, they're all uh, in a hash based on the socket ID but uh, yeah, every time you select an avatar it puts that reg in the, in the number of the avatar so you can actually see where uh, it was getting uh, uh, let's see here messages from the different host so that's 4C and let's press in a couple of times here and that one's 4O. Four O and four C. So you can tell they're two separate sockets. And you can see the last message from four C was reg one. And he's set to avatar number one. And the last one from 4C was uh, to use avatar two. So that's what we're seeing over there, reg two. So if I go over here and press ready. Oops. Yeah, press R for ready. And then you can see 4O just sent ready zero. Then if I press R again, then he sends a message ready one to the host. So if not everyone's not ready, if I go over here and press R, and then I have the start game command, so I'm gonna press S. So the host is going to check. So I got a method called check start game. So there's uh, two players, but one of them's not ready, so he can't start the game yet. So I'm gonna set him to one. So now everyone's ready. And also have a display lobby command, which is D. And when you press that, it basically sends a message to the host just saying print out all the data you have for all the players. So you can see when I press D, uh, it prints the name, which is basically the avatar ID, and then also the ready flag. So this is something pretty neat that's going to start up right here. So I got the two Tetra City windows here. So when I do press start game with both players ready, then it'll start a countdown, which is that CD value over there. So I'm going to press S. So yeah, that countdown's going 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Then both games start up at the same time. Currently, they have different uh, random number generators. Uh, but I'm planning to fix that soon. But over here in the client window, you can see both of them are updating. I'm just using static values right now, but where it says uh, sending player data, that will actually be the array that, which represents the data on their board. And also you'll see message in there. 
So I'll say, uh, let's see, your message, uh, t one t zero test data and one test data. So after the host, so the test is running over here. And the host is receiving uh, the status from each of the clients. So this is where you see message from socket 4 3, 4C or 4 zero. You'll see the message is update DEF. So DEF will actually be the game board data. Uh, but I currently don't have that working right now. So once it has that, then it adds those to a... Uh, data array for each player which is uh, indexed by the uh, it's actually a hash which uh, uses the socket ID for the hash key and then the value is the uh, board data sent from the client to the host uh, and then that data gets sent back down to the clients so that it's able to generate so I'll have like right here where you see the black box that'll actually be there'll be a, a box for each player that that's in the multiplayer game and it will show a preview of their current board so that's basically it for now I'm gonna show the countdown working another way so I'm gonna control C both of these that kills the window and also got to kill the host so I'm going to start the host again press S to start them up and then I'm going to start both of the clients so I'm going to go to multiplayer client connect then press ready and on this one, go to multiplayer, client, connect, ready, then i um, got to do this somewhat quick, but I'm going to press start, then click on both of these. So you can actually see the countdown messages getting sent to the clients as it was counting down. That just ensures that everyone's starting the game at the same time. So if there's somebody a little bit lagging behind, then they'll see that countdown. Hopefully that should uh, give the players a little bit of a warning as well about when the game's about to start. So that's about it. Just wanted to show a quick demo of the multiplayer working in Tetris. It will not actually working, but just the uh, socket connections between the multiple client and the host. Uh, hopefully I'll have more work uh, done on this scene.